All right, so in this next problem, they want us to find some voltage Vx. So notice how the voltage Vx is across the 3 kilo ohms, and the 3 kilo ohms is in parallel with the 6 kilo ohms on the right over here. Now, because they're in parallel, it means that the voltage across them is, is the same. And if you find the voltage across the parallel equivalent of devices in parallel, that is the same exact thing as finding the voltage across the individual components that make up the parallel equivalent. So we can make our lives easier by redrawing the circuit as such. Okay, and the 2 kilo ohms came from the parallel combination of the 3 and 6k. All right, so we're going to solve this by using loop analysis, and then again with nodal analysis and look at how those two compare for solving this circuit. So if we're doing loop analysis, the first step is to draw in our, our mesh currents. This will be I I naught or I zero. This will be I one. This will be I two. So because the the uh, mesh current I zero is describing the current in this part of the circuit, then with an I zero is kind of given to us by the current source as just four milliamps. Same thing goes for I one. This would be six milliamps. Okay, so this is given to us by the current source. All right. Well, the next step in doing loop analysis is to assign branch currents that will dictate your polarities across the uh, resistors. So, if we say that current's going down here, and let's say it's going uh, towards the right here, any direction works. Okay. So because it's going down here, plus minus over here as well, plus minus. Okay, so now we can do our KVL or our loop equation. Right? We'll call this the I2 loop. All right, so sum of voltages equals zero. That is the setup. So we'll start uh, right here then go clockwise. So the first term will be 2K times I2 minus 6k times I0 minus I2 plus 4k times I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. Now both I0 and I1 are given. So here all we have is one equation and one unknown so we can solve for I2. So when you do that, I2 is going to be 4 milliamps. Now using that, Vx is going to be just 2k times I2, or just 8 volts. Okay, so now we're going to solve for Vx using nodal analysis. Okay, so now we're going to solve the same exact circuit by using nodal analysis instead. I'm going to leave this simplification right here, this 2 kilo ohms in place, because it will not change our answer in any kind of way. Okay, so the first step here, if we're using nodal analysis, is to look at the nodes here. So here's one node. Here's our second node. Here's our third node. And you always need a ground reference node for loop for uh, nodal analysis. So here we go. This bottom node will be our ground reference node. We'll label this node over here on the right. We'll call it uh, I don't know, V2. And over here will be V1. Okay, now nodal analysis is basically just KCL. So now we have to write in our directions for current. So we'll say it's going, uh, I don't know, down here towards the left here, and it's going down here. And of course, the current in these branches over here and over here is given by the current source. So 
let's do our nodal equations. So we'll do at v2, at the v2 node, n is equal to out Okay, so which currents are entering the V2 node? Only the 6 milliamps from the current source. So 6 milli is equal to everything else. So this current over here is going to be equal to V2 minus V1 over 4K. Current down here is going to be V2 minus 0 because the ground node over 2k. Okay, so here's our first equation. At the v1 node, again, n is equal to out every time. Okay, a little bit messy. So what's going into the v1 node? We have the 4 milliamps and this current over here. So we have 4 milli plus this current over here, which is going to be V2 minus V1 over 4K. It does not change. So then all this is equal to what's leaving the node. So we have the 6 milliamps from the current source. And then this current over here, which will be V1 minus 0, because the ground node, over 6K. OK, so now we have two equations and then two unknowns. So we can simplify both of them and then use substitution or a matrix to solve for V1 or V2. Now V2 is the node of interest because Vx is actually equal to V2 minus 0. Because Vx is the voltage difference across this resistor. So from here to here is Vx. With the upper hand side being more positive because of the, of the polarity assigned. Okay, so when you do that, V2 is equal to 8 volts which is equal to Vx. So again, you get the exact same answer using either method. Of course, nodal analysis here would take far, far more time than doing loop analysis. Okay, so here's just a quick summary of how to write currents in terms of V over R and how to write voltages in terms of I times R. So you would do this, this first part over here in uh, nodal analysis and down here in uh, loop analysis. So you, can, so you can pause the video at any time to view the uh, figures like here and also down here. Okay, so we're going to end this with a Thevenin's problem. So in this circuit right here, they're asking us to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit, basically, for the load in the problem. So our first step is to always open circuit the load for any kind of Thevenin problem. And so this open circuit voltage will be VT. Right, so VT is a voltage, so we're going to use KVL at some point to find VT. So our new mission becomes to find other voltages in the circuit and then use those to find VT. Now, the most obvious KVL path that we see is right here. Right. So that involves the voltage across these two resistors. Luckily, we already know the voltage across this resistor, because there's 5 amps flowing right here. This part of the circuit goes up, then has nowhere to go but left because of the open circuit. So we know immediately that there's going to be 20 volts across this resistor, the 4 ohms, 20 volts. For the current over here, we're going to use loop analysis. All right, so if we start to label our mesh currents, so one over here, let's call it the uh, I X. This one over here, this is a given from the current source. It's just gonna be five amps. We also need to choose a direction for the branch current on the two ohms. So we'll say that's going down. We could also choose up, but both are totally fine. Alright, so if we start doing our first loop equation, so for the I X loop. Choose a different color for the loop. This. Make sure we're doing this one right here. Okay. So, so my voltage is equal to zero. That's the setup every time. 
So we'll start right here, then go, uh, you know, clockwise. So negative 40 plus 13 times ix plus 2 times ix plus 5. I'm doing plus here because both of the mesh currents are going in the same direction. So they're both aiming downwards towards the uh, middle branch. So here we can just say ix plus 5 for the branch current right here. All right, and then this is equal to zero. So in solving for ix, you get ix is equal to two amps. All right, well now we can solve for vt by doing kvl. So we'll do kvl in this manner right here. So we're doing kvl. We'll start right here. So vt then plus 20 volts, so plus 20, then minus 13 times ix. And this is of course just two, this is just, this is just two amps, so they're equal to zero, so then vt is equal to six volts. All right, so for RT or R thevenin, we open circuit any kind of current sources and we short circuit any voltage sources. So we've done that here and also over here. So if we look at our nodes here, you can see that the 13 ohms and two ohms are in parallel. So you can redraw the circuit just like this. All right, so now everything is in series. So RT is just going to be 1.73 plus 4 ohms, or just 5.73 ohms. So then our Thevenin equivalent circuit would look just like this. All right, so that will conclude the exam review for you guys. Good luck.